I'm Kevin Shaw, and you're watching the Watercraft Journal. For the first time in my nearly 20 years of reviewing personal watercraft, have I ever intentionally delayed, even avoided, writing a review. Seriously, this one has got to be easily three or four months late, and frankly, I'm still struggling to write it. But here I am, and here we are, so I guess there's no more putting off the inevitable. A few months back, I got to spend a couple days on the 2023 sea to Explorer Pro 170, and I quite literally hated it. But to be fair, I think the problem might be more with me than the Explorer Pro itself. I've had quite a bit of time to think about it, and I think it's a matter of the Explorer Pro targeting a customer that, frankly, I have zero in common with. I'm just not who the Explorer Pro is aiming for. As biased as I might be, the Explorer Pro 170 represents everything that I detest about the trajectory of the current watercraft market. Namely, a gravitation towards machines that insulate the rider from the environment and keep them distracted from the visceral sensation of riding, reducing the on-the-water experience to being little more than transportation, a means from getting from one place to another. Of course, this was my initial response to the Explorer Pro. Others saw it just as sea presented it, an unlimited access to shorelines and waterways that you otherwise couldn't reach by conventional watercraft. Even the ad material was enticing, albeit a bit misleading. Smiling campers unloading coolers and camping gear as their sea sit beach dozens of feet up a rocky shoreline. And while yeah, the Explorer's bow rail is intended to be used to drag the nose up on a shoal or sandbar, each fixture is reinforced with a steel plate so you can even tie up your anchor or dock line to the powder-coated railing, the Explorer's ST3 hull is still made from BRP's proprietary CM tech, which still doesn't respond well to beaching. There's no reinforcement or rubberized keel guard as some had speculated. Although the $16,799 SeaDo does come equipped with SeaDo's intelligent debris-free pump system, that's IDF, it's mainly intended to purge grass and kelp that's tangled in the intake grate, not dislodge small rocks and pebbles from the impeller and it's not too uncommon for rocks to wash up into the pump while beached on a shore. So if all that wasn't clear, let me re-emphasize. Don't beach your skis! Buy an anchor and tie it up in three feet of water. There's a reason they put that in the owner's manual. The pictures they're showing beaching the Explorer Pro? Yeah, don't do that! Okay, so with that out of the way, let's get back to the Explorer Pro 170. At the outset, it's really not that different from the Fish Pro Sport. Both skis are identical in hull and deck design, ergonomics, and key features. Both come with a 1630 ACE 3-cylinder producing 170 naturally aspirated horsepower that's fed by an 18.5 gallon tank too. And like the Fish Pro, the Explorer comes with a rear deck extension, but it's equipped with a second set of link attachments. The added 11.5 inches to the back of the watercraft allow for two link accessories instead of the Fish Pro's one. Yet, a third pair of pop-up cleats also permit the traveler to bring a single accessory in the center, permitting for four different arrangements. Additionally, the Explorer Pro includes a massive hard-mounted platform behind the rear passenger seat with even more link mounts. This deck gives you three more positions for your link items and a single spot for the Explorer's gargantuan Explorer bag. It's a whopping 100 liter, that's 26.4 gallon, watertight storage duffel bag that can be locked down using link attachments, stacked atop other link compatible accessories, or carried as a backpack. Some final similarities to the Fish Pro Sport include the angled gunwale footrest, ergo lock knee pads, and a Garmin 7 inch touchscreen fish finder GPS and fish locator. The Garmin chart plotter features an in-haul transducer with mid-chirp technology as well as a token for access for a free upgraded regional map, which is all really good functional stuff. It's where the Explorer diverts from the Fish Pro Sport that I found most problems began to rise. Both share the center storage bin totaling 25.3 gallons of front stowage, yet when filled, the rear-mounted Explorer storage bag exceeds that by a whole other gallon. 
strap down another couple of jerry cans of fuel or a large fish pro cooler and you've got an extra couple hundred pounds hanging over the transom. The Explorer also comes standard with the sea tech package, which consists of a full color split screen 7.8 inch display that interfaces with your smartphone via Bluetooth or USB port in the glove box, but never simultaneously, and is supposed to provide music, weather, and navigation through the BRP Go app. The dashboard is navigated through a responsive toggle pad on the steering. Prompts guide you through a series of pages to manually input your phone's name, pair it to the dashboard, access the BRP Go app, permitting for GPS navigation as long as your phone has a strong Wi-Fi signal, and play music. Again, only accessible if your music catalog is saved to your phone or you have a Wi-Fi signal out on the water. I've documented my previous travails with the BRP Go app and the tech package interface extensively here at the Watercraft Journal. Without expounding further, it's been resoundingly negative thus far, which is particularly disheartening as BRP's 100 watt premium audio sound system was easily one of the most recommended additions that I made for years prior to the advent of the cumbersome tech package. Now unique to the Explorer Pro is that the premium sound system is particularly potent thanks in large part to the touring windshield, which protects riders against wind, weather, and water. At speed, the shield reduces wind noise so much that the music or podcast come through with crystal clarity, which, even as I write this, sounds really good. The windshield has a thin rubberized lip around the screen, which softens its edges. It also sits on a sliding track, which allows the whole windscreen to give a couple of inches when pressure is applied. During my two-day ride, we discovered that sliding the windshield forward to its stop and pulling up detaches it from its tabs and folds forward, nearly flat on the bow. Because we were riding through the intracoastal waterways around St. Augustine, Florida in August, we were sweltering behind the windshield. A small plastic vent did little to direct any air towards you. Instead, its purpose is to defog the plastic windscreen. Desperate for a breeze, we all folded the screens down and rode in the open air for much of the ride. I also noted that the clarity of the screen completely vanishes in a multicolored pool of gasoline when wearing polarized sunglasses. This reduced my visibility to near zero, making it impossible to read the water, which aboard the problematic ST3 hull proved itself yet again to be dangerous even for an experienced rider like myself. Thankfully, the Explorer Pro comes with two features which helped offset the completely obstructed view. A densely padded Explorer Pro seat, which raises the rider an inch higher into a more vertical riding posture, and the adjustable handlebar riser, the same adjustable steering neck available on the Trix and RXPX. Whether sitting back on the raised seat or standing up, I wasn't leaning to reach the bars, allowing me to comfortably see above the obscured windscreen during my two-day ride. And it was here, peering through an impenetrable windshield, tracking my dogged progress on a massive seven inch chart plotter and fretting over my iPhone persistently failing to sync with a digital dashboard that I realized I was hating my experience on the Explorer Pro. Rarely did I look up to soak in the scenery or enjoy where I was. Rather, I was too busy looking at screens to bother to see where I was. This, I realized, is not what jet skiing is supposed to be. This is the exact opposite, and I didn't like it. Please don't get me wrong. sea knew exactly what they were aiming at with this ski, and for the most part, did a great job of checking all the boxes to make sure that these customers would be satisfied. It's just that these people do not want to experience anything while on the water. I know this because I get their emails, I read their comments, and I review their complaints. And believe you me, there's a lot of complaints. So what'd they get in return? A joyless machine that can't traverse the slightest ripple of chop, is horribly imbalanced when heavily loaded, and rewards the pilot with a stale, lifeless ride from one destination to another. The Explorer Pro is big, and worse off, it feels big. She's 146.8 inches long, which is 6 inches longer than the Ultra 310 LX. She's 49.4 inches wide, which is 2.5 inches wider than the Cowie, and 890 pounds dry, 
So when you factor in 155 pounds for fuel, coolant, oil, and a battery, puts the curb weight closer to 1,015 pounds. This stuff is all important because the Explorer is only rated for a total capacity of 600 pounds. When the majority of that weight is distributed behind the rider by loading hundreds of pounds of cargo and fuel, the balance of the machine is thrown off. Suddenly, the flat rear half of the hull is doing all of the steering, which is not the same as trimming it down. When burdened under such a load, I found the Explorer Pro significantly underpowered, unmanageable in mild chop and wakes, and nigh dangerously uncontrollable in heavy seas, what I'd consider three feet and above. One of our group was thrown forward into the windshield. Others lost cargo or had link attachments break. I personally duck dived the entire craft up to my elbows as we exited into the Atlantic near Amelia Island and lost a GoPro to boot. Admittedly, I can see how the Explorer Pro would best serve those riding in cold weather or isolated locations, as two of the units in our group came equipped with BRP's electric heated hand grips. But it seems disingenuous for me to suggest that such a purchase be strictly used for a few months out of the year, and that's why it's hard for me to recommend it. In my procrastination in getting this review out, I've shared a little bit of my displeasure with the 2023 Sea to Explorer Pro 170 during live question and answer sessions on YouTube, and to their credit, many have bucked my opinion and gone ahead and purchased one. Thus far, those who've told me such have enjoyed the many features and unique abilities of the Explorer Pro, and that's great too. Like I prefaced at the beginning, I just don't think this one's for me. Some of you will agree with that, and some of you won't, and that's okay too, we all don't have to like the same things. For me, this just wasn't one of them. I'm Kevin Shaw and you've been watching the Watercraft Journal. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, leave a comment, and share it with your friends to help us grow the channel. And if you want more awesome jet ski content, please visit us over at www.watercraftjournal.com where new articles are written and published every day, Monday through Friday, entirely subscription free to you.